Ask credit by birds in hoe. What job do you think is, physically and mentally, the hardest for the average human? Grew up in an area where a lot of people worked and lumber very physically demanding and so many ways to die or be maimed. The most horrifying to me was the people who would try to move separate logs in the water, who would then end up falling between a couple of logs and ultimately be crushed or drowned. We actually had a surprisingly large list of logging deaths on a memorial plaque in town for how small our population was. I grew up and lived, and now work, around forestry logging too. It's awful, but almost every couple of months we hear of another person dying from working on the job, whether they're a faller, hauler, operator, or any of the jobs affiliated with the industry. Underwater welder? You are always under pressure at work. Deep sea welding is brutal you down there in the dark for days in a small cabin I think it's paid really good and you work only few days a year cause your body cannot take the constant pressure and decompression. People who clean up crime scenes has to be up there. I heard an interview from someone who worked with crime scenes, it was one of the people who worked on the Pulse nightclub mass shooting if I recall correctly. When asked what the worst part of that job was, he said it was all the cell phones. They couldn't move the evidence, and the phones of the dead kept ringing the whole time. Every call, a loved one, praying they would pick up, but they never would. It was hours of the phones ringing over and over. Ems you're expected to sit and be bored then suddenly be at 100% mentally and physically with no warning or warm up. The pay is shit. The gratitude went up a bit after 9-11 but it's still a bottom of the totem pole kind of job. And let's not forget having to carry 500 pounds patients up and down flights of stairs in an emergency. I couldn't do this job. The nasty shit they have to deal with with homeless, alcoholics and drug addicts. The shit they see at car crashes, chronically ill people with oozing bed sores and maggots and wounds. No thanks. Takes a special kind of person for this job. Removed. It's not just watch and listen, sometimes they infiltrate a network and have to contribute. And then go home to their own kids. There's a doco called the children in the pictures. These people are freaking heroes. My partner works in the foster care system. The hardest job in the world you can't change my mind. Meth must be incredible because the shit that people are willing to put up with in order to feed their addiction is beyond comprehension. I worked in the foster care system for two years. I could only do two years before I was worked so hard, and to such an exhausting degree that I was hospitalized for my mental health. It really hurt me to leave my kids. I worked in direct care, but it would have killed me to stay. Boring answer. But emergency response paramedics and firefighters specifically have so much, vastly higher rates of PTSD than any other profession, including soldiers, doubly so for wartime paramedics. Anyone working as one for more than like, a year, has their own heart-wrenching story about watching the life being squeezed out of a child while powerless to help. My dad retired as a fire chief and he definitely has PTSD. He was a first responder to the Oklahoma City bombing on the 19th of April 1995. I have heard him and his old fire buddies talk about it once during a reunion party and it was gut-wrenching and absolutely heartbreaking. They don't talk about that shit often for good reason. Coal miner in Appalachia, underground with no natural light doing back-breaking work for 10-12 hours a day. I got the black lung, pop. One profession that's often overlooked in terms of how demanding it is mentally is that of dispatchers telecommunicators, the ones who answer 911 calls. They take some truly awful calls regularly and somehow maintain their composure throughout. And they do it all again and again. They are true silent heroes that don't get recognized anywhere near as much as they should. I had a friend that did this for a while, absolutely wrecked her. She had to hear the most horrible things over the phone, then had to hang up after emergency services arrived and just hope everything ended up okay. I couldn't do it that's for sure. Mentally, 
the guy at the FBI who has to sort through all of the child porn evidence. I used to have to redact child porn case files. I've never been squeamish about images but goddamn. Wasn't my primary job but days I had to do this got an extra hard workout in the morning and some hot tea and early bedtime that evening. Seriously, fuck pedophiles. I'll carry this stuff in my head because I have to but those kids deserve better. Children's Oncology Children's Hospice to talk to a pediatric home hospice nurse during nursing school clinical rotation and damn IDK if I could ever which is weird cause I'm in pediatrics right now and considering working hospice someday just not peds hospice. Underwater welder. No thank you. Being a soldier in WW1. Probably the most traumatic event affecting such a huge group of people, ever. J.R.R. Tolkien said that the endless night explosions and light flashes during the Battle of the Somme inspired his vision of Mordor when he wrote L.O.T.R. A.A. Mill was there too and went home to recover from an injury and spend most of his time in his son Christopher's room playing with him and his stuffed animals Winnie the Pooh, E.I.R., Piglet and Tigger. Being the executioner in a slaughterhouse. Just killing all day every day. Day after day. Probably not the most physically demanding but I've got to believe it would take a huge mental toll. Yes I know I read an article where they interviewed someone who killed pigs for a living and they literally said pigs will fight not just to save their own lives, but to save the lives of other pigs as well. Mentally, any job in which you see people dying on the regular. Nurse, soldier, etc. There's no way seeing someone crying out for their mother as their life slips from their grasp before their eyes won't take something from you and, if it doesn't, that's probably more concerning. Physically, slave. Not even a question. You work non-stop in harsh conditions doing massive amounts of manual labor with poor food, little rest, and likely ample beatings. The sad thing is that it's still around today, both illegally and, in certain parts of the world, legally. Combined? I don't know. Dart. Slave soldier? I've heard being an air traffic controller is mentally and physically taxing. An air traffic controller described his job to me as 99% boredom and 1% sheer terrifying panic. Nursing was physically hard when we had to do all the lifting of patients ourselves. Lifting machines weren't around in the 80s and amp early 90s mentally it was hard seeing people suffering and dying comforting them and amp their loved ones was a big part of the day a lot more time was actually spent with the patient as computers were only for pathology then also a lot of stress constantly assessing and amp and acting quickly when you're responsible for people's lives having to be competent with drug dosages side effects interactions and amp etc. But I actually love being an RN and AMP, eventually taught prac to uni students. Logger. A hospice nurse carer. I have a friend who does this and she actually finds it really rewarding and an honor, to care for her patients and their families to the end and to make it as bearable as possible. She's one of the most positive and caring people I know, though. It definitely takes a type. I would say being a soldier in an active war is even more demanding than being a carer. To never know if you would see the daylight of the next morning and to see your friends die in horrible ways. Having been in combat on three continents. War is 95% extremely boring. The other 5% though still have the nightmares 20 years later. First responders maybe, they never know what they're walking into. Sewer garbage collector, sewer cleaner. Empty Everest Sherpa. Sherpa are a people. Not a job. Lots of Sherpa people do porter on Everest though. Also people from Katman do porter on Everest and aren't Sherpa. Those untouchables, lowest caste, in India who are responsible for clearing debris blockages and sewages without any PPE. 
oil rig roughnecks. That shit is physically insanely heavy and you have to be focused 100% of the time or you'll lose your limbs or your life. Roughnecks are definitely not focused 100% of the time. Most of my job entails yelling at roughnecks to get off their phone, and I used to be one 20 years ago. It's also quite safe today. The worst part in my opinion is working outside in extreme weather, otherwise it's a pretty sweet gig.